Hello again, everyone. Edwin Learn back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be giving you uh, my take on the June 5th, 2020 lunar eclipse in Sagittarius part two of two. Now, uh, another thing I want to talk about as far as this uh, lunar eclipse in Sagittarius goes. Now, this it's important to look at the aspects it makes to the points in the chart as this could uh, of course, impact the delineation and interpretation. Now, mine is going to make a, it's this transit's going to make a very loose, inconjunct aspect to my uh, tor natal Taurus ascendant. And it could be uh, pretty important considering you're talking about the, the strong disparity in the two signs. I mean, you're talking about the, having this transit and then this full moon in Sagittarius, it could be very powerful emotionally becoming very cognizant, maybe like a self unveiling, so to speak, self revelation that I really need to expand horizons. And it's in my seventh house, but pretty close to my eighth house cusp. So this could really manifest in a number of ways. This could be about really uh, uh, it, wanting to expand horizon, uh, strong emotionally, perhaps, uh, to expand horizons and relationships and even in a shared resources situation, really conflicting with the Taurus Ascendant energy, which of course could be you know, where the outer demeanor, of course, could be really what I call immutable and intransigent and really not and almost immovable because Taurus Rising could be very sedentary and very set in what uh, what the person is doing and also when you're talking about in conjuncts in astrology they could be about adjustments so i have to be wary of either i mean it could be too much of one energy or too much of the other that may be manifesting that there i might be expressing could there be a strong and powerful need maybe to expand the horizons maybe too much so at the expense of just um, as far as my you know, Taurus rising, perhaps stability and not using um, maybe enough of the Taurus, uh, maybe practicality and common sense or what have you, or it could be too much, uh, or, or it could go the other way. It, it could be a situation where I could be expressing too much of the Taurus rising energy and wanting to just not really being very immovable and transient where the physical body might be very immovable and very intransigent and so averse to change that I will strongly not want to expand uh, horizons perhaps so it could it could really go I mean it, it's one of those things where the in conjunct uh, situation can go either way I believe now the thing about another thing I want to um, talk about is now this could also be when you're talking about uh, full moon lunar eclipses in astrology they could be the end completion or culmination of something now uh, it could all be also especially if it falls in the second sixth or tenth house in one's natal chart which I refer to as one of the money or work houses it could signify the ending of perhaps a Sagittarius career or vocation now, given it's Sagittarius, it could, it could be something with the law or publishing, uh, some work connected with translation or even uh, sports. It could be working in horse stables or some with archery if you want to be more specific as far as Sagittarius sports may go. Uh, it could be college teaching may come to an end, something with traveling or theology doing something where you're in where you're going uh, at an, a travel field such as working as a pilot or a cruise director and the fact that it's a lunar eclipse could have more significance and emphasis in contrast to a regular full moon this could and, and how could it differ well as this could be something that could be more life-altering it could be something that you may have done for a very long period and now is the time when you've gotten completely uh, perhaps tired of it remember when you're talking about full moon lunar eclipses in astrology it can be a time where one becomes tired full or exasperated at something and it could indicate I mean where you where one actually on their own volition just is tired of a certain in this case a profession and decides to and it doesn't mean it it couldn't end through a termination of some kind but in a lot of cases I think it's when people just had enough of something so anyway 
Now, uh, as far as Sabian symbols go, this is going to be at 15 degrees Sagittarius. And, and as far as Sabian symbols go, well, this could uh, this could be uh, really what, what one has to be aware of. It may be the end of a connection with a person that may be capitalizing on one's affluence or prosperity or wealth. Say, if you have this in uh, the seventh house, this transit takes place in the seventh house. It could be where you might decide to terminate. Uh, I say if you have somebody that, lack of better words, like a sycophant or somebody like a parasite that, that's been kind of feeding off of you and, and you feel like they have potential to go out and make their own money and they're not and they're just using you for, for monetary gain, this could be a time where you may end it, like say in a relationship or a strong friendship uh, connection. If it's in the seventh house, in the fifth house, it could be with a lover or romantic. Uh, partner and it may come to an end the third house it could be a sibling a cousin or a neighbor so you understand what I'm saying so of course it's important to look at the house it falls in now another thing too of course it's important to look at the electional aspects it makes as this of course could impact the delineation and interpretation now this is going to make a very close square to uh, Mars and Pisces and it's also going to square Neptune and Pisces at this time now I think a lot of this it, we, it could really be the way this is going to pan out keep in mind of course we're still very strongly in this coronavirus uh, pandemic and you're talking about the uh, really Pisces energy and the fact that Pisces can be connected uh, with diseases that can't be eradicated or cured and you have Mars in the mix this could be about a very strong conflict I believe between combating uh, this coronavirus situation and also conflicting with the emotional need perhaps for out being outdoors sports foreign travel which are all things of course which could be associated with the zodiac sign uh, Sagittarius now the thing about it, uh, another thing too that uh, I wanted to, to talk about is that we have to also, I mean, of course, uh, other electional uh, transits may be intensified because they're taking place at the time of this full moon lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. Now, one thing I know is that we're going to have the Sun in Gemini at this time make a conjunction to Venus in Gemini, which of course is retrograde at this time. Now, the uh, way this may manifest, this could be a very strong focus on two loves at this time. Gemini could be about duality. Uh, many of you may remember that song, uh, Torn Between Two Lovers. I believe the name of the singer was Mary McGregor. And she, ironically enough, had her Venus in Gemini at 29 degrees, the full culmination. But anyway, again, you, have, you could have this strong, very focus and attention on in many in many cases it could be two loves a person may have and you got to remember coupled with this uh, lunar eclipse in Sagittarius Sagittarius lunar eclipse in Sagittarius energy and it could manifest and really becoming tired or had enough maybe of somebody being overly adventurous and this could be in the sexual area this could be uh, in life the sexual aspect in life so to speak it could be a time where you have these energies going on simultaneously where many people will really make not, they may not have much choice but to make a decision if they are involved with more uh, than one lover because it could be a time where one maybe somebody may be calling one out on something it's where something might be unveiled there might be some unveiling regarding uh, uh, a situation where somebody is involved with more than one person uh, it could be that one one lover says is has found out about the other and it might be very intensified considering you're talking about the lunar uh, eclipse and Sagittarius and I think too when you're, you're talking about this energy as well and the fact that, that you have the Venus uh, in Gemini energy opposing the, the lunar eclipse full moon in Sagittarius the fact that you have that opposition there's also that's an indication I mean oppositions of course could be adversarial they're they're opposing each other that Gemini energy could be a lot of that love perhaps for more I guess you could see their superficial communications are just using common uh, street sense 
versus that emotional need for higher education. What's interesting enough is that you have the you have this involved in a mutable T-square configuration because you have this uh, Neptune and Mars in that mix at the focal point of the T-square, which of course squares the Moon at the time and Venus and uh, and the Venus Sun conjunction in Gemini. That energy. That could manifest, you're talking about the point of overemphasis, over accentuation being that Pisces conjunction. This could be where a lot of people could be using this coronavirus situation as a means to determine, well, am I going to, am I, am I going to focus more on doing something, getting, getting, getting by in my street sense, which is the Gemini energy versus doing something with more higher education, further educating myself. Do I feel safe going into a college university, assuming they are open? Okay, or do I just try to get by using my street sense for the time being and wait till it's safer? I think that's a lot of how a lot of this energy may manifest at this time. Hold on a moment, people. Sorry about that. I'm back. Now, uh, it's also important to look at other transits uh, to your natal chart, of course, because they could be amplified at this time because it's taking place at the time of the lunar eclipse. Now, with me, it's very interesting. I'm going to have a very tight uh, tra conjunction transit. Transit Mercury in Cancer is going to make a very tight conjunction to my natal Sun in Cancer at this time. Now, Mercury and Cancer energy can manifest in really extemporizing in speech, being very extemporaneous when one speaks. So I think the way this may work for me, it might be a period where I can really speak off the cuff very well, extemporize well, and being able to shine. The fact that this is taking place on the lunar eclipse, it could add more significance. Maybe this gets some notice from, from other people as far as shining. Uh, and this way also too, it could also manifest in getting some kind of dissemination or news regarding the physical body. Remember the sun is also connected with the physical body. It could be something cancering related such as something with the chest, the breast or the stomach. And at the same time, on a negative, uh, a negative way, this may pan out. It could also be when you're talking about mercury energy. It could be about thinking. It's in being in Cancer. It might be lamenting, brooding, and the fact that it's hitting my sun in Cancer. The sun can represent the ego, so it might be something where maybe I'm really strongly lamenting over some past hurts, and it's tied into a bruised ego. And of course, if this is happening on, since it's happening at the time of the lunar eclipse in Sagittarius, it might be much more intensified and amplified. And I have to make sure that 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 energy doesn't impact me so negatively that it, that it affects me for a long period because this is taking place at the time of the lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. Yes, it's going to be followed uh, by a solar eclipse on like either the, the 20th or 21st of, of June, I believe. So uh, this lunar eclipse may not have as more, you know, as far as the staying power be as sustained in its effect as a typical lunar eclipse, but it still can have more impact, I believe, because it is still a lunar eclipse in contrast to a regular full moon. Anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment. Until next time, people, Edwin Learned saying stay well.